The two top covers are nearly identical. In what way do they differ? Well, this is the one from the earlier camera and you can see it has no guard around the film release button which makes it fairly vulnerable to the film release button being accidentally pressed. This is the later one. It has a guard around the rewind the film release button which tends to make it harder to depress that by accident. So that was a change that was made at that stage and that's one way you can tell earlier cameras from later cameras the presence of that guard. And how else do they differ? Well the only difference here I can see with these two is with the film speed scale. Film speed scale on those dials. The later camera goes to six, ASA 650, the earlier camera goes to ASA 320 which is DIN 30 and DIN 27. Was there any difference in the meters themselves? I suspect not. I think the meter probably stayed the same. I think it's just um, it just showed things differently on the dials. I'll compare those a bit closer and see what I can tell you about that. Yeah, so at the end of the scale there, that's showing between. EV12 and EV13 and this one it's between EV13 and EV14 that would be about right and on that marking there yes that's there's about stop difference which is about what you'd expect but as for the movement itself no I'm not convinced there was a difference there I think it was probably the same movement I think that it was just uh, just scales here and how the scales work. So these things, as I say, they're pretty much identical, so they're going to require pretty much exactly the same sort of treatment in order to deal with it. The window's a little bit grimy. This is by no means a bad example of these things. Um, the viewfinder system on the Retina 3C has got about 20 glass air surfaces. And that's, that's a lot of surfaces to gather up a little bit of grime each. And each little bit of grime just adds up and so you soon end up with a viewfinder that instead of being sparkly clear, as well you can imagine what looking through that many surfaces is like, it, it can often be exceptionally hazy. Sometimes they're so bad that they are just a, uh, a tobacco smoke coloured haze and you can see nothing at all, particularly if you point your camera into the light. So, taking this apart to clean it, where do we start? Well, let's start by taking off the accessory shoe. I'm only going to show you one top cover because these are so similar, there's not much to note. On the inside, I want to unhook the spring from the frame counter and lift that out of the way. There are two screws here hold this mask in place and that mask is supported on two little standoffs why they chose to use two pieces of metal instead of one thicker piece of metal well that's that's somebody else's decision here's the the, meat, the glass windows from the viewfinder and they are exceptionally grimy well they're not really they're about normally grimy but that's about all that can come out from the inside or all we need to take out anyway I'll check these two screws here they not uncommonly are found to be loose. They can loosen up to the extent that the whole meter needle attachment and dial falls off the top of the camera. Now I need a special spanner to get that screw out. 
this screw is not identical to the similar looking screw that you see on the Retina 3 Big C cameras or the Retina Reflex S or 3 or 4 where they have a similar looking screw holding down the top cover. This is a different design of screw. It's brass, it's pretty fragile and if you go, you try and over tighten it, it will shear off and the only source for one of those is another Retina 3 small C camera. You may have seen me using this tool before. It's the, the pins are identical spacing on this screw as they are on the pinhead screw on the rewind of these cameras. So let's see if I can get this unscrewed. That uh, screw is very easily scratched too, so you've got to take a lot of care with that. Right, we'll take those dials off. You can see this is a bit crusty. That's just dried out grease. It's sort of gone hard and crystalline almost. So that certainly needs to come off. And these, these dials need to be cleaned. But there's no serious problem there. And I'll just check that this moves freely. That little action there follows this cam in here. It seems to be very good. It doesn't look like there's any problem at all with that. So I've just got to clean this top cover up. I'm just using some naphtha here to clear that old grease away. You can see that's coming off quite dirty. If there's any stiffness with the action of that follower needle, you may need to remove this and flush that out a bit. But um, like a lot of things, if, if you don't need to do it, leave it well alone because it's easy to dig yourself into a hole fixing things that don't need to be fixed. Problems of that nature are usually found on cameras that are exceptionally dirty, dusty, um, perhaps showing signs of corrosion. Then you find that you, yes, you have to take everything apart. And you still not might not get a wonderful result. Right, so the top cover here, you can see little patches here down the bottom edge. Now that's where grime has collected down in the edge of the body and uh, in the, under the chrome trim. Is this the one we're working on? Yep, this is the new one with the chrome trim. And just a bit of moisture gets under there and it just percolates away, you get a bit of corrosion. A lot of the staining that's coming off here will be just skin oils basically, they're just just from handling. You can see it's quite dirty. Now if you've got a plain top cover, one that didn't have a mechanism in there like that for the counter, often you can get a, a really good result cleaning up the top cover. Uh, Cleaning it in hot water with normal dish soap and a uh, an old toothbrush, and that'll lift all that old 
finger grease and dirt off the chrome very nicely indeed. But with a mechanism like this, you've got a bit of a sandwich. You've got the, the number disc that sits on top of this wheel and that's got this little ratchet arm on top of it and that's held in place with the another ring and that ring is crimped in on the back of that post so there's a, a number of surfaces in there if you were to try and clean this mechanism in hot soapy water that all that would get filled up with water the grease that's in there would turn into a nasty emulsion it'd be it just becomes a real nuisance trying to get it clean and working nicely so best just to wipe the surfaces carefully here the metal surfaces with naphtha on a cotton bud and you'll lift off the vast bulk of the the dirt and grease and some of these marks they're not going to come out there are tiny pits in the chrome and they're there to stay um, they may represent where stray drops of moisture once sat it's difficult to know they're very tiny you don't notice them in normal use it's only when you are looking up close while you're working on things that you can see that there's something there I can feel it I can feel there's something there a lump or a bump because the cotton buds catching on it now that would actually be under the shoe so I don't need to chase that but I can see some microscopic bubbles in the chrome here and that's corrosion underneath the chrome plate this chrome and the chroming on these cameras of course is comparatively thin uh, but chrome's chrome's not impervious and moisture will pass through chrome into the underlying layers and corrode those surfaces and then of course chrome will blister off all right, well that feels that's quite good I'm quite pleased with the state of that and I've got to clean up the glass surfaces here I've got to clean up the uh, meter window inside and out and the eyepiece glass here now that's Crimpton you'll see there are three small black pieces there that's the edge of the frame crimped over edge of this black eyepiece this doesn't unscrew and it's not meant to come off occasionally you'll see people have got a pair of pliers or something on that thinking they can unscrew it to clean the viewfinder and um, that's doomed to dismal failure when people do things like that okay well I'll get some glass cleaner onto those surfaces and uh, tidy up these other parts with a bit of naphtha and then reassemble them. I'll start cleaning the windows up here. I'm just using some glass cleaner, domestic glass cleaner, nothing fancy. You may have to have a couple of jobs turns it to doing that window because it's got those sharp corners it's very hard to get in and clean them and of course I need to do the underside and the needle the follower needle gets in the way there so you're pretty much limited to doing one side and if we swing the needle out the way do the other side check to see what sort of a result I've got from that the insides 
sometimes a bit trickier because there may be a bit of grease floating about. That looks pretty good. And I'll do the the eyepiece lens here, which is uh, it's just a plain glass on the Retina 3C. It's not a not a lens. I'll do the outside because that will be the dirtiest. And it's a bit the easiest to get at to clean. And with that cleaned, I can turn my attention to the inside window, the inside surface. And you can just poke your cotton bud right through from the front because we've got no window on the front. And if you swirl it about, you can actually get good coverage inside that rectangular opening. Now I'm looking to see what sort of a result I've got from that. That looks pretty good. Now there's a fleck of something in there. A bit of dust or something, I'll see if it'll blow away. No, it won't. It's between the glass and the mask. Right there at the bottom, I'll zoom you in a bit. Where are we? Yeah, you can see it there clear as day. See that speck? I want to see the back of that, so that's going to be entertaining. I'm going to have to uh, fish into that with a little bit of cotton and see if I can get that to come out. I'll just get a bit of cotton from one of these cotton buds. Yeah, we're at the bottom, aren't we? See if I can encourage that in there. I really want a toothpick to do that. I don't want to scratch the glass. There's virtually no space in there. Oh, that's all right. I've shifted it. It's gone. So now I'll go back and clean that glass again, and I should be good to go. Let's clean the outside again, or make sure that I've got that clean, and then do the inside. So that piece of dust was just sitting there and it's, but now it's gone. Come on video camera, hurry up, we want to see this. So but now it's gone, so now we've got a nice clean window. So that's that part dealt with. I've got to clean up the stuff, the dials and so forth, which are at the moment are still greasy. Alright, so I'll pop that to one side. Let's find some of these pieces that need to be cleaned. Now the dials in particular, I'm interested in cleaning these. And getting that back on the top of the camera. And these are just... covered in dried out grease. Almost certainly there will be some degree of dust content in that grease that it's gathered up. I just want all that stuff off there. That was just my phone dinging in the background. But it was probably some useless uh, message. You know what phones are like, they give you useful messages like here are your photos from four years ago or something of that nature. Some useless piece of information you didn't need.
Well, you can see the mark on the paper there, but actually that's quite a, a clean and tidy example of one of these. They, they're often very, very filthy. All right, let's get those pieces to one side and put them back on the camera. So I'll start with this, and you can see that crescent-shaped cam surface in there. Put the little bit of synthetic grease in there. Hook that wheel into place and check that the follower needle moves smoothly. Of course that's working very nicely indeed. The wavy washer, I'll put some synthetic grease on that. The film speed dial, it only fits on there in one position. It's got an odd shaped notch in the centre that sits around that boss. If I can get it to seat, that's better. This piece likewise has a little tab on it so it can only swing through a fairly small arc. And the screw, which I've got fitted to the tool here, to get that down. Check that that moves, check that that moves, swings through its normal arc, that looks good. I'm just going to tighten this screw very carefully. Being careful not to overdo it because, as I mentioned previously, they fall over and snap off very easily. Right, so what else have we got here? Let's get this on the top of the camera. We'll put the shoe back on the top of the camera. So once around this with some naphtha. Now, with cameras that have seen a lot of use, the underside of the shoe is often very badly stained with uh, every sole, everything that's ever been poured onto the top of the camera. And corrosion or usually corrosion this one's quite good the shoe is unusual in that it doesn't have a scratch down the middle from where someone has pushed in a electronic flash there's a, there's a bump right there and I can't tell what that is it's a little drop of that CRC Electra clean on there, see if that'll hurry this thing off. And I think it's it's going away. I'm going to have to uh, put on a jeweler's eyeglass to see what that is. It's just a speck of something. It's a lump on the surface. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's corrosion. But I'll have to find out what it is. I can't get close enough at the moment. Well, it turned out it was a tiny blister in the chrome. So it was corrosion. It was corrosion that had got in. Something got under the chrome plating. I've mentioned previously chrome plating is not uh, impervious to moisture. And that had just raised a blister on the chrome. So a little dot it's less prominent now, but it's there to stay. There's no question about that. Okay, so I've got to put the glass back inside here. So 
these two somewhat dirty pieces of glass will have to be cleaned. So I'm just going to clean those with glass cleaner, normal domestic glass cleaner, and a cotton bud. Give them a good wipe down here and then clean them with a soft cotton cloth. And if you're hunting for good soft cotton cloths, your most worn out handkerchief is usually the best place to go. Well laundered handkerchiefs have typically been, they may have been circulating in your pocket and back to the wash for many years. They are very soft and they make a marvellous cleaning cloth for dealing with pieces of glass like this. This is fairly clean as some of this glass goes. Um, you need to clean the edges if you've got the glass out because frequently oil or grease or other contamination will be round on the edge of the glass and it'll just wait until you've put them back in the camera and then first warm day it'll seep its way around the corner if you don't clean the edges as well. Okay so I've got that glass good. I've got the deposits off it. Now I've just got to sort of give it a bit of a polish with a cotton cloth and then I can slide them into place. First I need to get this frame back in place and there are these standoffs that support it. Now only they go in, they could go in two ways but only one way is correct the longer side goes to the front and here's the bracket that holds our glass in place I'll just lower that gently into place here and fit one of the screws this is awkward to do because almost inevitably the standoffs will move. The, it's very hard to get the screw through the standoffs into the plate. That appears to be done. Now I'm going to slacken those, leave those screws slack because so I've got to slide the glass down inside there. So the main window slides in here and the smaller window has to slide into that black tray there. Then I can push that forward with my finger inside the top cover there, make sure that the main window is sitting correctly. Do up the two screws. And there's the glass back in place. And the only thing I need to do now is put the spring back for the frame counter. So here is the spring. Now the little end here, the hooked end, that goes downwards up so that the open side is downwards. The open, open side is downwards at both ends here. If you put the spring on the other way it will catch up with the cocking rack I think. not give you a very good result. This spring is just playing hard to get. Yeah, I'll just hook that into place. So that as this moves the spring pulls it back to the rest position each time. Well that's that top cover. That's, that's ready to go back on the camera so we can put that to one side because that's one of the last things that actually goes back on the camera. And of course it's make for the other camera 
basically that's going to be exactly the same job. This one's a little bit dirtier. No, not really, it's much the same. But I'll just do this one off camera because I haven't really got anything interesting to show you about this one. Unless I do find something, in which case I'll be back. Now I've got both tops cleaned and ready to go, I can turn my attention to the rangefinders.